Welcome back. Um, during the last video, we went through installing the valves and putting the head back together. So it's now time to put the head actually back on the block. So here's the finished job from the last video. Come up really well. You can see the machine faces there are very smooth. Uh, that's an RA of 13. You need something better than a 20 finish if you're going to use a MLS sort of metal head gasket as I am. Um, I usually uh, put oil as I'm doing here. It's a good idea because you really want to make sure you prime up all the oil lines before the head goes on and the drive shaft for the oil pump. Um, you'll see in a moment I, I put a screwdriver where the oil pump drive is and I, I turn it a number of times before the oil actually fills up the oil lines, the oil filter and so forth. And you can imagine if you didn't do this how many revs your engine would do before you actually get any oil anywhere. Uh, whilst I use assembly lube and it will probably be okay, uh, I've put a lot of effort into this and I want to know that there's oil pressure pretty much straight away when I start this engine up for the first time. So I've edited it out a fair bit but I've probably turned that at least 50 revs before I got oil um, coming out of that top port. There's only the one port between the block and the head and you'll see it at the front there where eventually oil will start coming out. Once that's clear, um, it's just a matter of wiping it all down and uh, cleaning up all the faces so you're ready to put the head gasket on. The head gaskets for these engines, uh, they're not that easy to find. I hunted around for ages and I finally found a appropriate gasket that included the front uh, timing cover section. Um, it's one millimetre thick and uh, appears to be very good quality so we'll see how it goes just put the uh, oil drive shaft in there um, another thing is you must put that in before the head goes on Unfa unfortunately in a 3 TGTE, that little shaft there does not come off if the head is on it fouls uh, under the bottom of the head so uh, it's probably an easy mistake to make but yeah don't make that mistake make sure it's in before you put the head on. The metal head gaskets have a very thin layer or coating on them that helps them seal so you don't need sealant, you don't need oil, you don't need anything on the face, you just need to make sure it's nice and clean. So when I had this uh, block prepared I actually gave the machine shop the front timing cover and they machined the face of that at the same time so I know that the timing cover and the block are exactly the same height. I do use a tiny bit of sealant um, just between the timing cover and the block. Um, whilst it's pretty good, I just don't know for certain, so after I get these head studs in, I put a bit of sealant there away. You could put the head on first, I suppose, and then put the bolts in, but you're not certain that the head gasket's in the right spot doing it that way, so I think this is better. Put all the head studs in, put the gasket on, and then the head will just fit straight on. It's an embossed gasket, it's a multi-layered stainless steel gasket. I haven't actually used one of these before, so it'll be interesting to see what it's like, but when I did tension this up, it felt really good the way it tensioned down, so I've got a very good uh, finish on the head and the block. I'm not expecting any problems, so time will tell. ARP lube on the nuts and washers, put them all on. And then it's just a matter of talking them up. The 3TGE manual goes through and tells you what order to do them in. So in the first instance, I just use a, a torque wrench, obviously, once I've got them all on. And I just do them up lightly to start with. Uh, probably something like 20 uh, foot pounds. And you'll see in a moment, I, I don't really go crazy about the order until I start to get some tension on it. And then after that, I tension them up to what ARP states, and you can see here it's actually 90 foot pounds, which is quite tight. So here we are, just got the torque wrench. As I said, this is probably set to about 20 or 25 foot pounds. Uh, just slowly go around in the first instance because the gasket's obviously, obviously starting to squash down. Once I hear a click and I'm starting to get a tension that I can monitor, 
then I spend more time and I go through the right sequence. So you certainly want to tension these up in the right sequence. Don't go from one end to the other. You've got to go opposing ends to make sure it's even. Go around a number of times. I started at 25 foot-pounds. Then I went to something like 40, then 60, then 80. And then I finished up at 90 foot-pounds, which is what ARP state. You'll see in a moment, I'm doing the last, I'll show you the last tensioning at 90. Um, it, 90 is quite tight. There's a bit of stretch in these bolts, they're made that way. Uh, this gasket felt really good going on. I really don't expect to have any problems, but again, time will tell. The other thing is I don't plan to put coolant in when I first start this engine. Uh, I'm going to just put distilled water uh, for the first heat up just to make sure that that gasket is really sealed properly because uh, coolant is much thinner than water and it's got a more of a tendency to fit in between any gaps there there may be. There's the head bolts, they look really good. Very happy with that. And there you go, the head's on. Just got to put the timing uh, chain tensioner on, measure the valve gaps, uh, the valve bucket gaps, which is what I'm doing here. The inlet needs to be something around 0.29 millimeters, which that's very close to it. And the exhaust is about 0.35. Uh, go through, rotate the cams around. Now you may have noticed before I put the head on, I had the pistons positioned so they were in the halfway position. Um, so that as I rotate this cam, I'm certain that the valve's not going to hit on top of the piston. So you need to be careful of that. Check all the valve buckets, you need to do it on the inlet and exhaust. Under the valve buckets there are little shims. If this gap is too big, that means you need a thicker shim. If it's too small, you need a thinner shim. So it's just a matter of working out what gap you've got and then uh, replace the shim to the right thickness. So out of the eight shims, I had to purchase five. Three, only three were correct after all the machining. Just finishing the cam clearances here. Um, after this, uh, I put the chain tensioner in. I actually have bought a lot of Camiri stuff, so one of the Camiri items I bought was a cam tensioner. It's quite a nice unit, it's a very tight fit though. Uh, you'll see it in a minute. They don't actually make one for a 3TG, but the one I've got here is actually from a 2TG, and it fits no problem, despite what some people will tell you. Um, it's hard to see but on the front of the cams, on the just behind the, the front bearings there's a little notch. That cutout needs to be facing perfectly up when the engine is at top dead centre. Still at this point the pistons are in the halfway spot. What I do is put the tensioner in, put the chains on, put the sprockets on but don't put the pins in the sprocket and the pins what stops it rotating uh, without the cam. So that way I've got it all set up and what I do then is I just rotate the crank to top dead center knowing that the cams are in the right spot and then I fine tune it to get those notches exactly facing up when the cam when the crank is top dead center so it's been quite a quite a big job on this engine uh, I did also have my own set up for coil on plug so I've gone direct coil on plug using a Howtech and that system um, was quite a bit of work but it's a true twin spark uh, you can just see on the cam tensioner here, I wondered how the oil doesn't leak out, so there is actually a little way around there. But anyway, I'll have this engine, it's all done now, I'm going to lift it into the car. Uh, the electrics is a reasonable amount of work, but I hope to have it running soon, and uh, see how it performs. Stay tuned.